Hello, my name is Soraya. A few weeks ago, I celebrated my 15th birthday. My parents and friends did their best to make this day really special for me, but they did not succeed. I spent most of this day crying in my room with the door locked from the inside. You want to know why? Because this was supposed to be a special day, not only for me, but also for my twin sister. But she is dead now. My sister's name was Fasia. Oh, it's almost unbearable for me to use past tense when talking about her. Fasia tragically died about six months ago. I miss her so much, and I hope you will be able to sympathize with me. The only ones who can really understand me are people who also have a twin brother or sister. Only they know how it feels to have a friend by your side from the moment you were born into this world, or maybe even earlier. What an amazing experience. It is unlike anything else in life. I know that some people don't get along well with their siblings, even with their twin sisters or brothers, but this was not the case with me and Fasia. We were both so happy. Nobody has ever had a better sister than I did. Although Fasia and I were twins, we were not at all alike. I mean, from the inside, since our personalities were totally different. As for the outside, we were two almost identical girls. Only Fasia was one and a half inches taller. Attempting to make her two identical girls look different, our mother always made sure that we wore different hairstyles from a very early childhood. But dad still occasionally confused us. Fasia was 15 minutes older than me. My mother used to joke that it was my sister who paved the way for me into this world. And, you know, it was true. Fasia was 15 minutes older, and apparently, these 15 minutes made all the difference. And Fasia was always ahead of me for these 15 minutes. While my sister was confident and decisive, I was often shy and timid. While she was ready to act, I had doubts for a long time. Fasia started talking before me. Fasia mastered reading and writing faster, especially when we were learning our mother tongue. So, it was like this in almost everything. But you know, my sister did not put any pressure on me at all, despite her total superiority. On the contrary, the first thing she was hurrying to do was to share her newly acquired skills with me. For example, my sister was the first of the two of us who learned how to ride a bicycle. And the day when Fasia taught me how to ride a bike still remains one of the brightest moments of my childhood. When we were 10 years old, Dad got his girl's presents. Each of us got a bicycle. Unfortunately, he did not have time to teach us how to ride them. Our family is not rich, and mom does not work since she takes care of the house, which takes a lot of time, so dad has to work very hard to make sure that his family lives a decent life. So we had to learn how to ride our bicycles by ourselves. And again, it was not a problem for Fasia. She quickly learned to ride, but I didn't succeed. I approached my father and asked him to help, but he never had time for it. I was very upset, and after I'd fallen down again, I left my bike in the street and hid in the backyard bushes. I did not want anyone to see me cry. After some time, my sister found me. Fasia hugged me, cheered me up, and offered to help. Of course, Fasia's attempts to put me on a bike were very awkward, because we were both just kids. I often fell sometimes together with the bike, landing right on Fasia. But after many scratches and bruises for both of us, I finally succeeded. I did it! And it was all thanks to my older sister. I confidently drove a whole circle around our street, and it was a real victory for both my sister and I. I was so happy at that moment. But now, I hate bicycles fiercely, and there's a reason for that. This... What happened to Fasia happened during an unexpected tornado. Our family lives in a city where natural disasters are not uncommon, but then this was the first storm of the year, which struck very unexpectedly. Neither I nor my family were notified of the impending threat, and we were not ready for it. If my parents knew about the danger in advance, they would never have let their daughters go outside. Mom and Dad could no longer have children. We were the only ones. And they always spoiled and cherished me and Fasia a lot. Sometimes even too much for our age. At least, that's what both of us thought. But this time, everything happened unexpectedly. That day, my sister and I did not have to go to school, but Dad had to go to work. 
I was at home with my mother, and Fosia had not come back home yet. The day before, she had stayed overnight with a friend. When the storm began, Dad probably went to the shelter together with his colleagues. He thought that we were all together and safe, so he did not call home while there was still an opportunity. That's probably why my mother started panicking. After receiving a warning for an approaching storm, my mother called the house where Fazia was and asked her friend's mother to keep Fazia at her home until the weather calmed down. But mom herself did not call Fazia, fearing that my sister might take the risk of trying to come home. There was a reason for this. Mom was very scared of the tornado that was approaching so fast, so she gathered all the necessary things in a big hurry and dragged me down into the shelter located in the basement of her house. But, but she did not give me time to find her cat. When the warning was announced, the cat was out somewhere on the street. I begged my mother not to rush. I was sure that the cat was about to come home. He never went further than a few blocks over the next street. But my mother panicked and just locked me in the basement together with her. She said that a cat's life is not worth the risk. I was so angry. So angry. Before the tornado began and all the cell service was gone, I still managed to text my sister about the way our mom had betrayed our cat. And I received a reply message from Fazia saying, Oh no! I will come as soon as I can! She always did everything quickly, my Fazia. And in the end, it killed her. As soon as the wind and rain stopped, Fazia grabbed her bike and left her friend's house in a hurry, despite all their attempts to stop her. Our block was not very far, and the wind was no longer dangerous. But the tornado cut off some power lines on our street. And for some reason, they were still alive. And when my sister turned onto our street, just across the street from the neighboring house, maybe she jumped off the bicycle and stepped onto the bare wire with her wet shoe that was soaked through with the rain. I really don't know. But when the storm ended and we got out of the basement, my sister was no longer alive. Life can never be the same after something like that. We all have changed. Me, my mother, my father. Fasia's death has literally destroyed my mother. She became a very detached, cold woman, completely unlike herself. I think mom blames herself for what happened to my sister. Dad also blames himself, although he has changed in a completely different way. He's done his best to make our family live on in the same way, as if nothing had happened. As for me, I lost my twin sister, a person without whom I could not imagine my life and I did not get any support from my parents. They kept blaming themselves, although it was me who was solely to blame for her death. If I hadn't sent that message to Fazia, she would have calmly waited at her friend's house for the storm to end. Was my mother right and the cat's life not worth the risk? By the way, I never found our cat. I guess he also died. For a long time, I did not understand how I would go on living. You know, I never believed in widespread stereotypes that twins could feel each other in a special way or read each other's thoughts. But after all this happened, I started to think that I just didn't notice it while my sister was alive. I did not realize how many things in my life were connected with her. And then I felt an unbearable emptiness that was impossible to fill with anything. And the silence. I heard a terrible silence as if someone had turned off wonderful music that has been playing for me somewhere against the background for all my life. I don't know how else to describe this feeling. I hope you understand me at least a little. And I also kept seeing Fozzi on my dreams. All the time. Sometimes I dreamt about my childhood memories that I had shared with Fozzi. I was not even sure if I saw them with my eyes or with my sister's eyes. And sometimes in my dreams, I still talk to her as if she was still alive. After these nights, my mother told me that she had heard me talking out loud in my room. And my mother was really scared every time it happened. And I was scared too, because of the way my mother reacted to all that. As my dreams started to repeat too often, my mother began to ask me questions about them, as if my sister was still alive. It seemed to me that it was only the stories about these dreams that could somehow wake my mother up and make her live again. It was so scary. It shouldn't have to be that way. I do not believe that it was some kind of mysticism. I rather think that, in this way, my subconscious helps me to overcome the tragedy. 
I asked my school psychologist if it could be true, and he agreed that it definitely could be. And he advised me to share my story with someone, because I obviously need to say it out loud.